I wrote a book called Faith and Doubt, and in a lot of ways I think the word and is the most important word in that title. So many people think that it's faith or doubt, but the reality is, Paul says, uh, we see through a glass darkly. One day we will see face to face. And um, right now, we don't have certainty. Uh, I, I will sometimes, when I'm talking on this subject, tell people that um, I'll ask folks if I'm holding a $20 bill in my hand. $20 is worth about 80 pounds. Um, and um, see who believes me, and like one person will raise their hand. And then I'll say, no, I'm going to destroy your faith. Then I'll open my hand up, and there will be a $20 bill in there. And I'll explain, the reason that I say I'm going to destroy your faith is now you know. And when knowledge comes, faith is no longer needed. As long as we have faith, we will also wrestle with doubt. And it's very important for people to understand the fact that you have doubts does not mean that you cannot have faith. Um, a distinction that's been very helpful to me has been to recognize the difference between certainty and commitment. Um, certainty is, is more of a feeling than not. I cannot generate certainty by an act of the will. And many people get into trouble in their spiritual lives because they try to force a feeling of certainty. But even when certainty is not possible, commitment is always on the table because I can choose to be committed. And commitment is a very important part of faith. It's actually the part that Jesus asks us to offer him to be able to be in a relationship with him. One of the interesting and to me really comforting aspects of the lives of the disciples is uh, their humanity, their commitment to Jesus in the midst of vacillation. And what's very striking in the Gospel of Matthew is after all those years of Jesus pouring into them, they're watching miracles, and then finally them seeing him crucified, the depths of despair, and then the joy of the resurrection. We're told at the very end in Matthew that they gather together before he ascends, and they worship him, but some doubted it. And it's amazing to think, even after the resurrection, there were still folks that doubted. And it's even more amazing to think Matthew actually included that in his gospel. He's not trying to um, whitewash the portrait of the disciples. And that means that even in the midst of my doubt, of our doubt, we can still give worship. And we can still be commissioned by God to do the work of Jesus around the world, which is precisely what happened with those disciples.